Okay, guys, so hi. So we're at Jack in the Box, and I was super excited to get my spicy chicken nugget combo. And I love Jack in the Box so freaking much. I go in with my face mask, and the door is locked. Go around the front, the door is locked. I really drove all this way to get these spicy chicken nuggets, and I love it so much, and that's all I've been wanting to eat. So I try to get a Postmate so I can, like, pick it up. Like, I'm a Postmate. I'm picking up food. That didn't work. Then I was like, oh, let me just get it delivered, and I'll just sit in the parking lot, and they could just literally deliver it to my car. That didn't work. So now I called an Uber to pick me up at the Jack in the Box and drop me off at the Jack in the Box, and that's not my Uber. And literally, I am going to hopefully give him $20.00. Is that enough? I guess I should probably tip him more. Maybe I should tip him more. I haven't used the Uber app in so long. I'm like trying to find the Uber app right now. It's a, I got a black Escalade and it's three minutes away. Now there's a couple options. I could just get in the Uber and just order, which maybe that makes the most sense. Should I do that? Okay, it's a black Uber Escalade. Is that so annoying? I just really want these nuggets and I worked really hard. I like told myself if I made two OnlyFans videos today plus two TikToks plus my vlog plus I got my lashes done plus I cleaned up my entryway of all my boxes. I was like then bitch you can go and treat yourself to Jack in the Box. It's freaking 630. It's pretty late. I was like bitch I'm going to bring an extra five. Like I'll give him right is that enough or should I tip him 20? I mean, ten dollars is enough to like go through it, like right, and then like pay for whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna tip him ten. Unless my food is less than ten, if my food's less than ten, I'm gonna pay with the ten and, and I'll tip him the twenty. If it's, you, you know what I'm saying? Like if it's if it's like fourteen dollars, something I'll just tip him ten, or I'll just let him keep all the change or something. I don't know. Is this weird? I just really wanted this. Okay, it's a dude. So already we're pretty good. His name's Muhammad. I feel like with a guy, they're just. I don't know. I feel like with female drivers, just Uber-wise, I just haven't had the best luck. And they won't let me go through foot on the in the drive-thru. So I'm literally stuck. This, this seems like such a mission, doesn't it? Like, this seems like a a mission. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to complete it. I think it's pretty foolproof now that I got it. Because, oh, because if you don't know why I can't go through the drive-thru, it's because my rolls, I have a rolls race. Hi. Um, it's just too long. And this is the problems I'm dealing with today. My, my Rolls Royce is too long to make that term. But I've been watching a lot of Veronica Wang videos. And she eats a lot in her car. And she has a really cool red car seat. And that's what I'm trying to be like. I want to eat in my car. And it doesn't deliver anyways. So, yeah. I just I just worked really hard today. And I just really want to, like, reward myself what I promised myself. Alright, you guys, we're gonna go stand outside for an Uber. This is so freaking weird. This is said Jack in the Box. And this is said Rolls Royce that won't go through. Oh, look at that. Okay, we got it all in one shot. I thought that was not Uber. Hi! Is it possible to take me through the drive thru? Yeah, I'll give you like 20 bucks if you can just drive me through the drive through They won't let me walk, and my car doesn't fit. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. They just like, they're not open to like walk in either. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Huh? Not inside, they're locked. No, no, even inside. I tried. It's locked. Yeah, they wouldn't let me in. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi, yes, can I get a spicy chicken, spicy popcorn chicken combo? Spicy popcorn chicken, okay. And can I, um, can I get a, do you have Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Okay, and can I also get mini churros? Okay. And can I get curly fries with the combo? Is curly fries? Yeah. And you said tiny tacos? No, mini churros. Mini churros, okay. And can I have that large? Okay. Do you want anything, sir? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, that's it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Here's twenty for you <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> no, I want to. I feel so stupid, but I really wanted these nuggets. 
I did. <laughs> I tried to even Postmate it to myself, but they won't do Postmates. They're not like delivering right now. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> just go through my, I just got that car and it's like too big to go through a drive through you know and I love Jack in the Box thank you no thank you did you guys close the in dining stuff today damn I was trying to get through I had to get an Uber to go through it <laughs> thank you Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, I guess they're open until five. You know what? I can just hop out here. Yeah, that way you don't have to like circle and make these left turns. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> what a ride. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you too. Got the jack in the box. Hey, vloggers. I see a vlogger over there. Okay. There's literally people vlogging, and I'm like, can I do any vlog? As I spill my drink. Okay. So I have no idea why, but when people when people vlog, it makes me like they're like a group of kids. They literally look like they'd be hype house David Dobrik types. I mean, they're obviously not, but they literally look like that. And I'm like, I wonder. They probably thought I was like a crackhead, like coming out of an Uber with Jack in the Box, like an actual crackhead. But okay, so I've been seeing. Oh, did I act? How did that even get? I got like chocolate. I'm like, I would eat chocolate today. Okay, so I have been watching a lot of Veronica Wang, and she was, Veronica Wang, I want to go be friends with them. There's, like, a bunch of young, cool-looking guys, but literally, they look like they're, like, 18, so I'm not going to be like, hey, I want to eat some Jack and Box, and I just got fresh as Jack and Box, and that was a journey to get it, so. Anyways, if you guys were vlogging at Jack in the Box on freaking, what day is it? Monday, July 13th at 6.30 p.m., what's up? I'm in a pink Rolls Royce though. I feel like that just totally, that guy was so cool. That guy was honestly so cool to take me through. I gave him the 20. I didn't even use the fives because I was like, let me just keep the fives for the, um. <gasps> no, my curling fives. All right, so we got some churros. So yeah, Veronica Wang eats a lot of fast food, which I didn't realize, and I have been kind of obsessed. Okay, that probably shouldn't do that, but I literally have something sticky on my, um, yeah, I guess we're back in lockdown, but then also that guy said that the dining room was open till I guess the dining room is open till a certain time oh my God, I love Jack in the Box So much It's so good and Maybe their car doesn't fit through either Ugh. I'm not gonna look okay. Oh my god, oh, it's a photo shoot. Okay. I'm so creepy. Oh, if someone did that to me, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Okay, why is there so much drama happening? <laughs> that was so creepy. That guy was like, why are you filming us photographing? Also, why are they doing a photo shoot at Jack in the Box? Do they really stand Jack and Box that hard? Because honestly, same. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. These curly ass fries. And fast food is so worth it, too. I, I really crave it. When I'm done with their shot, I'm literally going to like walk out. I'm gonna take the long way around. I'm trying to freaking.
Wow. So good. Throw out my food or something. <sighs> yeah, I did so much today and I was so proud of myself because like it was like one o'clock and I was laying in bed. I was feeling so depressed and just lazy and unmotivated and fat and whatever. I was like, bitch, just take a shower. I don't do anything else to take a shower. Should I take a shower? My eyelashes were looking wonky. I'm mean, like, let me just text my eyelash girl and just see if she has like any time to do my lashes and make me feel better. She comes over and does my lashes around like 2.30. Or like 3. And does a half hour. They look great. And I was like, oh my, let me let some makeup on my face. I'll feel better. Hair extensions don't always make me feel better. So let me just throw some hair extensions in. Um, I was like, oh, okay, bitch. Like, do a TikTok. Like, there's this one TikTok trying everyone to do. It's like, oh, make it stop, stop, stop. If you're on TikTok, you know. If you don't, be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I want this guy to take a picture of me. Oh, they got tiny tacos. That's so funny. <laughs> I just joined their photo shoot. Mm. I thought he was vlogging because he was like, I think he was. He was like turning like this. I don't know who they are though. Honest to God, if I knew, I'd be like, yeah. So my whole point is, I didn't really like anything because. Um, I was getting hungry and I really was craving Jack in the Box just out of nowhere. I watched Ronald Wayne eat like Harvey's or something. We don't have that here in America. But I was like fast food. And Nick Hato was watching her eat Burger King. And like that's not a good Burger King's like hella, hella far from me. I was like, mmm. Like, bitch, if you can get an OnlyFans, a TikTok, and obviously a vlog, because I do my makeup on my vlog. Like, go get your Jack in the Box. Do it for your main channel. That way you got, I kind of call that, like, my holy day of work. TikTok's not work. I just really like it. I don't know. But, and, and I did an Instagram photo, so, yeah, I did so much. I did the Instagram, I did the OnlyFans, I did the YouTube vlog channel, I did the TikTok. Now this is my main channel. And so, and OnlyFans video, obviously. So I really did do my, I hit everything, you know, and I don't have to post every day on every, you know, thing, but I don't know. I just like to do it. Mmm. And then it got to be like six o'clock or whatever. I don't know. I'm going to food. So imagine you do all that and you're like so proud of yourself. Uh, good job, girl. Like, good job, like, you know, pushing through. And then I get here just to be defeated. No, ho, ho. your girl does not get defeated. Uh uh. I don't know. My car is so comfortable. I just like, no, they're leaving. I want to go be friends with them. I want to take my mask and be like, do you know who I am? Anyways, my Uber driver was very nice, so thank you to that kind sir. He will get five stars. I was so nice. He was so confused, I think. <laughs> that's why I kept my Rolls Royce open so they knew, like, hey, it's my car. I'm not just saying that's my car. Because that's hella sketchy. Like, this is my car, but I'm going to come in your car. But apparently the dining room is open at till five. I thought that was weird. It was like, wait, but how are people supposed to carry out? I get you can't eat in there, but. They're in a Jeep, and why do you, every young influencer, I feel like the, the group of influencers after we all got like Teslas, and then like the new group of influencers watching, they might be, if they drive by, they might be that way. Maybe they're that way, I don't know. Mm, interesting. They're in a black Jeep Rubicon. I don't know. Oh, they left, so I guess I don't need to like walk and be like, hey. Oh, I'm throwing out my garbage. <laughs> oh my god, this is really good though. I'm really excited I came out. 
I got <laughs> I'm crazy bis. All right. Their popcorn chicken nuggets are so good. Like, no, it's like on another level good. Whew. Oh my God, they're so. This is gonna be my favorite meal. Wow, I don't know why I like this so much. There's something so good about these. <laughs> don't have my opinion on food, by the way. I have the most bland, boring taste. <laughs> this is Korean fried cheese. Mm. So I'm watching, yeah, like I said, a lot of Veronica Wang, a lot of Naya Rivera's like clips from Glee. I don't know if it's because I'm watching both of the, a lot of their clips, but they kind of look similar to me. I don't know. Like they have really nice full lips and they're kind of like heart shaped. They're not like the wide, like mine are very like wide sausage lips. They're very like heart shaped pouty and full. And then they both have like really nice teeth. Oh no. Mm. I wish I could be friends with my fingers. She kind of said it good though about Nikocado. She's like, I could be friends with him. If he wasn't so like problematic, she doesn't have any boundaries. And I do, and you can't be friends with someone who doesn't have any boundaries or the same boundaries as you because they're not going to respect yours if they don't have the same boundaries, you know? And I get that. I totally get that. And it's like sucks because like I feel like I'm that person, like the Nikocado, right? Where people think I have no boundaries. And I think the difference between me and Nick, because I, I, I like him and he's entertaining, but he really does milk it for reviews and drama. And I know people think I do, and I swear, I swear I don't. One, it gives me a lot of anxiety. Two, it's always very real people. So like the people I talk about are always it's like ruining their lives him and Orlin like fake a lot of fights and fake what does she call it like partner abuse or something and he does turn little things into big things and he, he like one of his channels is just talking about drama I, I'm lumped into that because I think people see me that way but I really 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 don't like drama I really don't my last few relationships or like people I've dated or whatever I've been very emotional and very like it eats me up and I I like don't want to be that person that just airs everything out, you know? Like Nick Akato, the one thing I thought crossed the line was when he aired out Zach's text messages to him about Stephanie or just about that whole situation and Zach Choi. I thought that crossed the line. I think like sharing private DMs. Someone on my podcast, because I was reading DMs between this like guy I was seeing and this girl like we were basically we were really we were exclusively together at this point blank period and he was dming another girl those dms got made public by that girl she put them out she tagged me in it she sent them to a gossip channel and so i was reading those those were public they were publicly on instagram it wasn't like i hacked into his instagram and took them i truly don't believe in like reading verbatim dm like messages dms just like when that guy tab who who um who DM'd me about Jeffrey calling me fat, bad skin, whatever in Vegas. And I DM'd him back. In his original DMs, like I'm not making a video. This is only between you and me. This will only stay private. Like I just wanted to let you know and I said thank you. And you know, I I felt this way, this way, this way during the trip in Vegas. Like this, this and this happened. Like I totally believe you. Thank you for telling me. I don't really want to say anything either, because it's not that I'm like scared. I think maybe I said scared. Sometimes I'm scared. It's just like I, I don't want the drama. That's what I'm saying. Like I truly don't. And I think I publicly have now said my piece on that where I'm like, I don't consider Jeffrey a close friend because of the stuff I heard. He has reached out and tried to apologize and I feel like his pain, I, I, I can understand it and I, um, like I understand it, but I'm not really ready to like accept the apology. You know what I mean? Like, or at least be friends on that level. I don't know. Cause it really did hurt. Like that trip in Vegas, like it's petty shit. It really is petty. It's like not that big of a deal. I just like cried when I came home. I was like, wow. 
I felt very mean girls. Um, it doesn't make him a bad person. Plenty of friend groups have that sort of like banter, sense of humor, whatever. And it just did not make me feel them. I watched Rick Sucks video and he's like, I love the sense of humor of... I don't know. I don't. I wasn't. I didn't hear the comment of Jeffrey saying, "Oh, he got me the cheapest thing at the Hermes store." Or it's just like I would say that about my friends. I'm like, I, I wouldn't say that about my friends. You know, I don't know. So I do feel for Jeffrey. I really do think he's working on himself. I really do think like some things he can't help. Like there's some things I can't help because you're traumatized. You're 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 covering. You're trying to cover something. I don't know. I'm not trying to make excuses. So um, all that to say. I never made a sit down. This is what happened to me on in Vegas or Jeffrey Star. I, I just don't. I don't want to be drama. I truly, truly don't. And me reading my D, the DMs between that guy I was seeing and this girl, you know, that was my lighthearted way to mask a lot of hurt. There's so much more I could say about that guy, that situation, me, personal, private details. But I just didn't. I thought that this is a good lighthearted way to at least get this off my chest, let it out there feel like I can get finally like get past it move on you know what I mean like I would never share personal stuff he shared with me you know and I hope vice versa there's like I do have boundaries there's certain things that I would never share about any of the buddy in my past relationships Michael Roger Sean Avi um Jason John, and John wasn't really a relationship, but like, you know, he shared really private stuff with me and like, he's a public figure and I could easily be like, well, he shared this, this, and this, he said this, this, and this, and whatever about his marriage or whatever. And there's just, and he's like a friend, so that doesn't really count, but there are certain, I do have boundaries. I don't think Nick does. I think, well, He just really knows drama pays and drama sells. And so he's really going with that. And um, this sucks because I feel like I've been thrown under the bus, obviously, with the cameo thing. But I will say he has talked about situations of me where he says he's not going to say what I said in private. And I reached out to him and said, hey, thank you. Because he has someone to prove that he doesn't care. He showed DMs and text messages from people. So there was definitely situations I've talked about with him that were horrible and really traumatizing to me that he could have just put out on blast. Just and he didn't so I think it's a case by case basis with him I think same with me I think getting into a relationship friendship with me I know my past shows me that I'm like a hothead or whatever or I can snap or whatever but there are friends like Angel who I had a falling out with and then we became friends and I never talked about it Adam um a Shane, you know, like I've never once I mean Shane and I have gotten into like literally one and a half fights and that was back in 2014 And finally we talked about him. I don't know if we did or not, but never did um, So again, it's case big case. I think it's more when I have like feelings for you I get a little more, you know, when I really trust like with an intimate partner I trust them so much and I love them so much. I really trust them to not hurt me the number one thing I ask for is loyalty, which I know is like, that's the number one thing. Like, yeah, I want loyalty and honesty. Like, they kind of go hand in hand. And once I, once though, like, it's it sucks. It's like, once that's gone, I think the only person I had loyalty and honesty with was Jason, which is why, like, it was hard to get over because he was so loyal and so open and honest and never talked to other girls, like, while we were dating or anything. He was... He really was. Not to say he was a perfect boyfriend. Obviously, that's where other things come into play. Where it's like, okay, that can't be all. But I did hang on so tightly on so many things that pissed me off. Because I was like, or just made me upset or uncomfortable. Because I was like, oh, but he's such a good guy. And I hadn't found anybody loyal and honest before him. And not since him. And so that's why I was like, oh. It just really sucked to lose that. But he showed me. That there is a guy out there that's loyal, honest. So if there's one, there's probably others, you know? Mm. So, maybe my Uber driver was my soulmate. Who freaking knows? <laughs> mm. 
Mm. And I do have compassion for people and why they are the way they are. I wish I knew Nick's story a little better. Why he craves his attention, why he acts out the way he does, why he's doing this, like, this current thing, which I really don't agree with, like, this partner abuse thing, where he's like, Orlin hit me, Orlin's getting a divorce, Orlin screamed at me, Orlin called me fat, like, this, the storyline between him and his husband, there has to be something that stems from, just like Jeffrey being, like, a mean girl or whatever, like, I know what that stems from, and again, I'm not gonna, like, share Jeffrey's, like, personal stuff, but, I mean, it's, again, it's, like, not making an excuse, but I, I have a lot of compassion, because I know people act out the way they do for a reason it's just not out of nowhere no one just wants to be mean no one like me just wants to like never have a boyfriend you know what i mean there's always and for nick to act out i wish i knew his story better because his parents are still together he seems to have a really nice family life i feel like he shared this so i feel like it's okay if i share some of this but nothing bad I'm just, he has a good family life and from what i know good upbringing he played classical music growing up like So I would love to know where this came from. It's like drama, dramatic Nick Aclado, you know? Mm. That is more because I connect with them. I see like, I see a similarity. Same thing with me and Jeffrey. I see so many similarities between us and the way we grew up and the way we think and act. I don't know. And these are so good, guys. I literally eat, like, almost all these. This is so relaxing. Eating Jack and Box and my Rolls Royce is, like, this is the life, y'all. I wish... Maybe one day I could have a contest with, like, a company that can help me organize it. Where y'all are, like, sitting in my Rolls Royce and me eating. <laughs> when we get Jack in the Box, <laughs> that'd be so much fun. I'm being dead serious, but obviously the corona is not happening, but... Maybe Adam and Eve or something. Oh. I could do it. It's just like the logistics of like booking the trip. And the legality of it. Might be easier than I think. I don't know. <laughs> My brain. I ate all these y'all. I crushed it. Oh my arm. <laughs> mm hmm Oh, this is so good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. Fast food makes me feel so happy and so good. It's so weird. Are there studies like that releases endorphins. I haven't even checked my phone. Literally, no one's even trying to call me. I haven't checked my phone in 45 minutes. And okay, I'm on a boat. Um. Anyways, I'm sorry that was rude. But I was checking my phone. While I'm doing a freaking video, Trish. Does this oversized scrunchie in this cup make me look so skinny? <laughs> mm. I'm so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you guys I don't know I, I really was in such a depressed mood this morning I'm telling you just start by taking a shower and like changing out of your clothes or your sleep clothes and then like maybe maybe like maybe try to make one on your face like you know me if you guys have followed me for a while you know I hate putting makeup on my face even to go out in public so for me to just sit, get put makeup on just to like I don't know do videos or whatever like that's a big feet for me so i'm not saying it always works because i remember like a week ago i have a mini churro seat um it was like a sunday or maybe it was a monday and i was like so excited to like work on stuff i was like okay i'm gonna and the chairs are cute mm. it's so warm and squishy in your mouth I went and took a shower and everything and shaved. 
I literally went right back to bed. I'm like, you know, no more energy. And that's fine. And I was okay with doing that today. I was like, if I just take a shower, okay, let me just get my lashes done. And then as soon as I had my hair and makeup, it was on. I was like on a sprint to get everything done. And I felt really good and really productive. And I feel really happy. Mm. Oh my god, these are so good. Oh my god. It's like the perfect meal. And the mini churros. Fast food is so, so good. Oh, I'm gonna sleep so well. What time is it? Seven o'clock. This car is so comfortable. I should do it living in my car challenge for 24 hours. <laughs> It feels like a freaking boat. I feel like a freaking I'm in a first class seat. It's insane. I posted my car tour this day. I know a lot of people are excited and nice. And then they'll be like, it's so ugly. And then you have the people are like, wow, I really wish I could invest your money on something. It's like, bitch, how do you know what I have my money invested in? If I got the money. Obviously, I got the money to spend. Now, why are people so worried about my money? But aside from all that, even if I spent paycheck to paycheck for this car, <clears throat> honestly, worth it. It's so uncomfortable and fun to drive. And to be honest, life is about experiences. It really is. I always say this. Not to say blow your money or whatever, but you, you know, if you're comfortable in life and you work hard and you're whatever. Treat yourself. Whatever that is. Some people it's video games. Some people it's vacations. Some people it's real estate. Like, hey, I got some real estate. And yeah, it makes me money and it's cool. Like, if everything went away, I'd be cool. Like, I have rental properties. Cool. You know, makes 10K a month or whatever. It's fine. But it's not like a passion where I'm like, I need to get more houses. I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, I have a man. I have like a, what is it called? Like a management company? Because my dad... When he like sold his company, he did all the like real estate investments, so he like helped me in. It's like cool. Like, yeah, okay, I got that set up. That's awesome, cool. But it doesn't like excite me. It doesn't like I don't work hard so I can like buy more properties to manage, you know? Because if I if everything went away and I was just making 10k a month off my properties, cool, but I would want to work hard so I can keep doing like music videos and keep doing buying a Rolls Royce and you know what I mean? Like this keeps me like hungry, this keeps me going. It keeps me like, oh okay. Like let's, you know, I don't know. I really lucked out with OnlyFans. It just totally like fell into this like, it's literally like hitting the jackpot. I don't know, I have such a good support over there. Thank you, if anyone is part of my OnlyFans, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart because like not only did it renew, like obviously monetary wise, you know, I was able to feel a lot more comfortable and stuff, but um, like honestly it renewed my confidence in myself, feeling sexy. It gave me this empowerment that like, yeah, people judge me for it, but it's like, I feel so empowered and it's like so funny because people will be like oh she must be desperate for money or oh, okay go sell your body and there's so much empowerment in that because those people are trying to like put me down and knowing that like I feel great doing it you know what I mean like I, I if I didn't feel great if I felt less than great doing it in any capacity I just wouldn't but I feel empowered every time I have an orgasm I feel great I feel sexy like I finally feel like set you know and then obviously there's the communication between people and there's just I like the interaction so much more. It's so much better. It's more positive. It's all about sex and shit, which is, you know, I, I like being naked. I like talking about sex. I like sticking shit up me and stuff. So I don't know. 
like I love this too like this is fun like mukbang trish really fun and I'm glad you guys still like it because I mean this is kind of the content this channel is getting right now because there's just really nothing else motivating me at the moment um but what else was my channel before just drama I guess so now it's just drama while eating food and I just thought oh I eat my food every day and this is the content I like watching right now yeah like watch Stephanie Sue Veronica way I was talking about these people um and other people I mean those are like the two I guess that post most frequently I'm um, not like Zach Troy I wish he would talk but I like watching him sometimes he's like spam and I'm like no there there is other people I can't think of I can't even think of their names there's some like girls that do their like full ass makeup and I watch I mean Hunger Diaries I watch her um I can't think of there are other people I'm just like so bad those are the ones that post every day so I watch them um, let me see if I can even go to my YouTube subscriptions and tell you because I feel weird. Because um, I just don't post that much. How can I go to see like who I'm subscribed to? Subscriptions. Okay, I'm going to the subscriptions. I feel like there should be something all... Oh, these are the people I'm subscribed to. Sorry. If you're still watching, hi. If you're over this, okay. Oh, I like Yamila, but she's not really a mukbang where she's like a stripper. Um, Steph Pappas. How can I forget her? I love Steph Pappas. She's a mukbanger. Um, I watch Rum Life. Nick Snyder. Mike Maljuk vlogs. He does like the night shift. He's dating Lana Rhodes. I watch him. He posts a lot. Fancy vlogs by Gabby Love. Um, Crazy Ray Ray. She's been doing a lot with her boyfriend. I like that content. Catherine Steele is a theater girl. I watch her. Is it Sophia Cleo? I think she's... Yeah, she's a mukbanger. Sophia Cleo is like a really... She does like veggie girl. She has like a really... Sounds creepy. A really pretty mouth when she eats. Um, Peter Hollins. He's like a Disney singer. Hunger Diaries TV. I mean, a lot of people just stop posting, honestly. I'm like going through, I'm like, I don't remember these people. Is Batty Maddie? I think she's a mukbanger. Batty Maddie, she's another one. She has like spicy noodles. She's really pretty, too. Um, I like watching pretty girls eat, I guess. I don't know. It's very satisfying. Kelly Eden, I love her. You guys remember little Kiva? Gosh, she hasn't posted in so long. Um,. Michelle, I miss her. She used to be a great muck banker. I mean, Bart Baker. Like, none of these people post anymore. It's, like, actually kind of crazy. I don't know. Wow. Roman Atwood. Like, none of these people post. Sophia Chang. So sad. Venetian Princess. Yeah, I think those are the two muck bangers that I was thinking of. I feel like there's another one I watch, but... Anyways, um, okay, well that's it. I thank you guys so much for like chatting with me. I don't know, I got in a really good mood all of a sudden. So, I mean, just like today, and I just really wanted to like bring that to you guys. I mean, I really just wanted Jack in the Box and I wanted to eat Veronica Wang style in her car because she has this really cool car with like red leather seats. But, um, but yeah, I was just sick. I was just thinking like how much my mood changed. And I was in such a bad mood this morning and it like changed by just showering doing my makeup and being productive like finding something to do and that can be anything like i have a whole list of things i want to do like i want to paint um i want to like learn britney's choreography from like her her little instagram videos like i have a whole list of things i can do that doesn't involve like filming because obviously it's my job but like when things when i'm bored i want to like fulfill it doing other productive things and i think that's like how we're gonna get through quarantine i think that's how we're gonna get through like depression and boredom and i don't know it's just my tips i'm i'm alone i'm solo i'm a solo act you know i see my mom and sister like once a week or once a week but um other than that i love you guys so freaking much be kind to yourselves really enjoy your life you guys life is short naya rivera was was identified today dead um uh, I think Corey Monteith died seven years ago. That was brought up today. Kelly Preston died last night of breast cancer. She was only 57. Um, there was a YouTuber who was 24. I really, oh gosh, let me get her name because I feel really bad that I don't know her name. Nicole Taya, Thea, 
London-based YouTube star Nicole Thea, who was eight months pregnant, died on Saturday at the age of 24. Thea's unborn baby also died. Her family confirmed she's a freaking gorgeous. Oh my god, young YouTuber, eight months pregnant. Oh my god, just absolutely stunning. That's her picture. I don't know how she. Oh god, gorgeous. Oh my god, okay. It's 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 so. Oh my god, and then there's like a video of her and her, um, her significant other, her partner, is holding her belly, her pregnant belly. Oh god, it like makes me so sad, and I just, I try not to think on it, because honestly, even the Naya Rivera stuff really made me depressed. I was like reading about it, like last night, or I think this morning actually, about the son, like they think that she got enough strength to put her son back in the boat, but not her, and it just, oh, like that image and that, that vision, and it's like she's, and I keep saying beautiful as if that's like a, whatever but for me i'm someone who's not blessed that way but i don't think of my life as any lesser so i don't want anyone to think me saying this is like only pretty people it's sad but no like i like i can't imagine and again this is gonna like people are like wow just because she's thin but i watched her on glee it's like she's thin she's beautiful these are two things that i wish i could be i wish i could sing i wish i could have been on glee i wish i could be you know an actress like famous talented baby married like she had all these things that like is to me perfection like she had the perfect life and then it's like gone it's all taken away i'm someone who does believe in heaven i do believe there is something even greater and i think that's why good people sometimes die young they get that fast pass to heaven sometimes they think like there's a limbo right purgatory if you will and you're like oh do i go to heaven or hell and like you kind of i don't know i like to think my god's forgiving and will like almost all get to heaven unless you're just evil and if that's the case then you are the devil himself and you'll just go back to hell so it's not really like you're god's children you're literally devil on earth but i think these ones who die young get that fast pass to eternity of like happiness and that's like they're suffering and it's sad and it's awful and i don't get life like if i think too much of it i'm like what's even the point of life what's even the purpose but um yeah i, I honestly just feel like in nicole as well i just think they're there are these angels that are up in heaven and there's a reason that they're taken from us early and we don't know what that reason is but i feel like it's happy for them even though we mourn i mean that's death in a nutshell they're good to be at peace right but we mourn and nobody wants to have their life cut short i mean do you know when you're dead no but for me i want to live my life you know i want to live a full life i always had said like i'll probably die young doesn't matter like oh i don't care if i die tomorrow but no i want to live i want to live to be 80 you know <laughs> um even if I'm alone, like, life can be really beautiful, and I like seeing the world and what's out there and people. I find everything interesting and exciting, and, um, yeah, I don't know. Just really, really cherish your life. Value each day. Don't let days pass you by. Don't let, don't find yourself, like, wishing days away. Oh, okay, just next week. Okay, next month. Like, really be in the now and be in the present. If you have family, love them. Love yourself make yourself happy live your life you know if that's like the one message i want to give out to people is like live your life um to the fullest you know um and it's hard because we're like in this weird pandemic but um yeah i don't know live your life jack and box huh? i don't want to bum people out because i've been thinking about this and it's all makes me so sad and i get so upset about it because it is sad um, and I don't want to just brush over death like that, especially Naya, you know, because that is how it happens. People, even me, and anyone, you, whoever dies, people mourn and like your family will always have a hope, but then, you know, people always start on the next thing. But also for me, if that happened to me, right, if it's like my death, I want people to keep living. I think it's sweet to, I'm talking for me personally, I like, you know, don't mourn, like celebrate that I had like this really cool life, right? And, um, and like celebrate that. And that's how I like to look at like Anna Nicole's death because it's very tragic, her, the details of her death and stuff. But I like to celebrate her life, you know? And that's why I liked, I know I'm getting on tangent and I'm gonna stop because I need to really go. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the Quentin Tarantino movie, how he re rewrote history by, um, by having Sharon Tate survive. Um, the, her killers ended up getting killed by Brad Pitt's character and 
she lived and I thought that was so beautiful because it showed her spirit her light they have this movie centered around her she's this icon in Hollywood and and now she gets to be remembered for her life and who she was and not her death you know um, and I thought that was really cool and I think her sister approved of it well as well she thought that was you know I thought that was cool so anyways um, we have Naya, you know, through her wonderful work and really cute, like, amazing interviews that just show how great of a person she is. And Nicole as well, her YouTube legacy, I believe. She had four videos that I think her partner posted. Um, and we can really celebrate them through, like, their work and who they were and their, their amazing people they were, you know. Um, yeah. Don't stress on things, guys. If things are meant to be for you, they will be for you. And nothing can stop it. If your light's going to shine, no one else's light shining is going to dim it. Everyone's light can shine the same. What's meant for you will be yours. And, um, yeah. You are exactly where you're meant to be right at this moment. You're right where you're supposed to be. I love you guys. Cheers. We'll see you in the next video.